Second it is, I guess, from a stop. Yeah, so there's no first, there's no third, as you can see. I've got fourth and fifth. This tranny is definitely done. Time to see if I can actually make it back to my shop. Try first gear again. Nope, second it is, first stop. Or clutch. Honestly though, I don't know why, but my brakes went as soon as my tranny went. I don't know what happened. I honestly think it was completely like pure dumb luck that that happened because that would have to like slice a line, but. But there's a couple other things I have to address. Now that there's a transmission problem, I might as well just deal with everything and get this thing back to 100%. Thankfully, I made it back to the shop. I've just been using my e-brake as a brake to get back. I had literally zero brakes, so something serious happened with that. Plus, I broke the tranny, so time to diagnose. So, what just happened was I broke the transmission. Um, unfortunately, it has seen quite a bit of abuse because the entire time I've been driving this, I haven't really lifted my foot to shift once. So it's seen a lot, honestly. Uh, it lasted a long time for what it did go through, so I've gotta replace it. But there's another thing, I did sort of have another issue along the road, but it still ran good, and I will show you that in a very, very moment here. But um, overall, the car's been great, it's been reliable. I broke one axle and one tranny so far, and I have one engine problem that I'm going to show you right now, and my engine is smoking really bad. And what I think I think it is valve seals. I'll show you and I'm gonna diagnose it with you to figure out what the actual problem is before I dig into it. So most of the time, if your car smokes on first startup and when you give the throttles quick snaps and tr throttle changes, that is most of the time a valve seal problem. And I think that is what is going on with mine. I'll show you because when I start it up, it'll smoke a bit. And then when I snap the throttle, it'll just smoke like like a chimney it's like a diesel other than like it being blue but that's why i think it is and after that we'll check the plug see what hole is actually making the the problem and we'll go from there so 
did you see it smoke once I started it up? And watch now when I rev it, it'll smoke like crazy. So it's smoking when it's first started up. That is definitely a sign of valve stem seals. And another thing is when you rev it. So throttle changes, that is definitely making a difference with the smoking as well. It's making it smoke like Chi Jin Chong, guys. Like, whoo, she's smoking. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all the spark plugs and find out if one is covered in oil. If one's covered in oil, that means I found the, the actual hole that has the problem. It could be the valves or it could be the actual rings. Let's hope it's just the valves and it's just the actual stem seals that need replaced, but who knows, we'll have to check that out. So I'm gonna remove all the plugs and check and hopefully it's just one hole and one side. If, Cause if it's two holes and one on each side of the engine, that means I have to rip off two heads. If it's just one or both are on one side, then I only have to take off one head. So let's compression test it. I do have a compression tester that is from Amazon. It's not very accurate, but it's good for saying what the cylinders are for equality. So when I'm doing all the testing, so I'm gonna test all six, if they're all around the same number, that means they all have good compression. If one's high, one's low, one's medium, it's showing that they are actually making different. From what I've, I've heard, these are not very good for having accurate PSI levels, but it'll do a consistent um, peak and mid and low. So that I can rely on. So that's gonna be a good way to figure out if I do have good compression. But yeah, honestly, you can get away with cheap ones. You just have to really not be scared once you see really low numbers, because if they're all really low numbers, it's actually the gauge and it's not the engine. So you have to kind of go by feel, but um, it is nice to have a good one, but I don't have that because I can't afford it. And I'm sure you can either because we have MX-3. So let's get right into this. I took the plugs out in the correct order. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I put them over here, all numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm looking good there. So let's diagnose the plug. So I'm looking for an oily plug. Let's look right at her. That does have a clean tip. That's okay. That does have a clean tip. That's okay. It's a little darker, but Moving on, a little cleaner. So, so far we have no oil consumption for what I can see. And then moving on again, looks good. Moving on again, not too bad. That's that's um, a little bit of oil burning compared to these, these four, but moving to this one. As you can see, this one is just black as black could be. You can see the entire, um, Thing is black compared to that one so you can see a little bit of white at the tip this one is completely black and it even stinks here's another angle of it it is just literally caked in oil so I am thinking that this is the actual cylinder that is making a lot of smoke and what I'm going to do is um, do a compression test and see if we can diagnose further to where this oil is coming from so here's my compression tester. I have the same thread end as a spark plug on there. So I'm just going to drop it into the hole and spin it on. So I've spun it on. I've just made sure there's some sort of torque on it. There's a little bit of a rubber on there, so it will seal. And now I'm going to crank it over and listen to the engine crank over five times. So it'll go duh, 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 and that's when I'm gonna stop. right away the first cylinder has 125 psi which i'm actually shocked that's pretty good especially coming from one of these crappy uh compression testers because they always shoot low that's probably a 180 psi um cylinder because it is a crappy gauge but let's see if all the other ones are the same or if they're higher or lower
All right, the compression testing is done and cylinder one came with a whopping 125, two came with a whopping 115, three came with 115, and then the rest were all 125. So the compression's bang on. They're not far off at all. And honestly, I thought this cylinder was gonna be the lowest, but it was definitely one of the highest because these three, 125, 125, 125, and then this one that had all the oil consumption was 125. So I did on my diagnosis is it could be valve seals or it could be the actual piston oil rings, but I'm gonna pray that it's not the actual oil rings on the cylinder, but worst case, I pop a cylinder out and I can re redo the actual rings on that cylinder, put new ones back in and examine the actual combustion chamber in the cylinder. So from what, from what I've looked at today, it is it runs great, obviously. It's got the exact same compression across the board and I've almost never seen it that good after that amount of abuse. So that is a great thing. So this head was two, four, and six, and this one was one, three, and five. So what I'm going to do is leave this head. I'm not even gonna take the valve cover off because there's no problems in here. So what I'm gonna have to do is take off the intake, take off the valve cover, take out the cams, take off the head, and there's gonna be coolant everywhere and all that fun stuff. But that's what I gotta do to, to make this thing not smoke. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna pop the tranny off and do that, but I might do that in a different episode. Yeah, so the plan is pulling that head off, replacing the valve seals, and since this is a very budget car, like I could easily just redo all the valve seats, uh, do the, all the lapping, but this is budget. So what I'm gonna do is replace what's broken, put it back together. So it's gonna cost me a head gasket, and it's going to cost me like four 50 cent valve seals. So this is gonna be a cheap fix. And um, the tranny that I'm going to replace also, I already have it, so it's gonna cost next to no money to get this thing back to 100%. And honestly, this thing smoked really bad as soon as I put it into this car. I didn't really wanna advertise it that that was going on, but it was smoking real bad and um, it's been throwing down a lot of power and I'm pretty stoked about that. But um, yeah, this thing is gonna be ready to go again. So my original plan was just to have this thing ready for spring. So I was like, okay, I'll put the KLZ in, put a new turbo on it and uh, tune it. And then next spring I'll have a, a circle track car that'll be ready to go. Meanwhile, I've broken the tranny and I have valve seals that are leaking. So what, what's going on here? Like that's not definitely planned, but um, that's what happens when you really give her the beans. So I'm going to get her right back into 100% and it will be going up for sale. I am going to put it for sale, I think for around seven grand and that's Canadian. So keep that in mind too guys and uh, I'd like to get rid of it possibly, but yeah, I'm gonna get her back up and this could be a circle track car for me next year or somebody like you guys could buy it for me and um, have a sweet, tuned, ready to go car for the street and for the circle track or drag racing but so it's gonna be it's gonna be a sweet car regardless but uh keep posted so in the next episode i'm going to take the heads off and do all that jazz and uh redo those seals put that all back together then i will do the training so we'll see you in the next one like comment subscribe and we'll see you later